Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be looking at units as part of the problem solving and data analysis part of the SAT math portion. As always, we're going to be looking at five questions. We're going to explain them to find the intricacies of this topic so that you can ace the SAT math portion. If you like these videos or find them informative, please be sure to like and subscribe. And with that, let's get started on our first question. Here it is. It takes 20 drops of rain to make one milliliter. How many drops would it take to fill a 50 gallon rain barrel? And they're telling us that one gallon is 3.785 liters, one liter is 1,000 milliliters, and one milliliter is 20 drops. Well, it seems, let's see what we can do. So, let's see. What can we do here? Well, we have 20 drops of rain in one milliliter, and we have 1,000 milliliters in a liter. So in one liter, we're going to have 1,000 times 20 drops, 20,000 drops for one liter. And since we have 3.785 liters for one gallon, we can multiply that to make uh, 75,700 drops for one gallon. Then we multiply that because they're asking us for 50 gallons, and we're going to have 3,785,000 drops in a 50 gallon rain barrel, All right? So what we did here is we just translated this, we just translated this one liter into a liter by using this, by using this one right here. And then we translated this liter into a, the, into gallons using this measurement right here. And then we just use what they gave us in the question. So all we're really doing here is we're just giving, we're just using the conversions they're giving us to find what the, the correct value here, the number of drops in a gallon, given the number of drops in a milliliter, right? So our answer here is going to be that 3,785,000. And let's move on to the next question. The wheels on a car are spinning at 625 revolutions per minute. The car travels eight feet every time the wheels spin around one revolution. What is the speed of the car in miles per hour? All right, and they're telling us that one mile is 5,280 feet. Well, let's see what we can do. So 625 revolutions every minute. And then we multiply that by eight, so we get 5,000. Since, we, we, since eight feet for one revolution and 625 revolutions per minute, we have 5,000 5, feet per minute. All right, now 5,000 feet is going to be divided by 5,280, and we get 0 0.947 miles per minute. But if we have 0 0.947 miles in a minute, in a minute, and we both want miles per hour, and there's 60 minutes in an hour, so we multiply by 60, and we get that there are 56, 0.8 miles per hour. And then asking us to the nearest whole number. So our answer is simply 57. Our answer is 57. And let's move on to the next question. All right. The oak tree outside Omar's home grew three feet in six months. Uh, approximately, at this rate, approximately how many meters will the tree grow in a year? Well, three feet in six months. So in one year, it'll be double six months. So doubles three feet. So it'll be six feet. And we're told that one meter is 3.28 feet. So we divide by the 3.28 and we get 1.83 meters. Meters. And they're asking us to run to the nearest tenth. So our answer is just one. 0.8 meters, and we can move on to the next question. Let's keep going. All right, question number four, and here it is. A cookbook featuring authentic British recipes contains the list at left of ingredients for scones. Marisa is making the scones in the United States where sticks of butter are measured in tablespoons, which are TBSP. How many tablespoons of butter does Marisa need to make the recipe? And your answer to the nearest tenth. One cup weighs eight ounces. One ounce is about 28.3 grams. And one cup 
is a 16 tablespoon. All right, let's see how we can do this question. So it's asking us how many tablespoons of butter does Marisa need to make this recipe? Well, we're given that we need 50 grams of chilled unsalted butter. And that's the only place we see butter. So we're going to use 50 grams, 50 grams. And I have to convert that into tablespoons. So 50 grams, we divide that by the 28.3 grams in an ounce to make 1.77 ounces. Now 1.77 ounces, well, since we have eight ounces in one cup, we divide by eight and we get that that's going to be 0 0.2 0 .2 cups. And since we have 16 tablespoons in a cup, we multiply by 16 and we get 3.53 or simply 3.5, round to the nearest tenth, 3.5 tablespoons, and that is our answer. Let's move on. All right, question number five, here we are. Dr. Li Ji measures the absorption of radiation coming from his x-ray device to be five times 10 to the negative 18 square centimeters per square nanosecond and he should report the finding in grays, where grays are equivalent to square meters per square second. Well, if there are 10 to the 9 nanoseconds in a second, what is the absorption of radiation in grays? All right, so that was a lot of words. And we need to find, we need to decode everything that was going on there. So let's write what was happening. So 5 times 10 to the negative 18 centimeters. Oops centimeters squared per nanosecond squared. And we're trying to get that to meters squared. It's our desired units are meters squared over seconds squared. All right, well, let's see. Okay, so here we're going to use this thing called factor label, which is an extremely useful tool that, we, that we'll, as we will see, five times 10 to the negative 18. It's really nothing new. It's just a way of categorizing the information we know to make it easier and making unit conversions easier in general. All right, so we have that. Now we're going to multiply it by this factor. Now this factor is going to equal one because if we multiply by one, then nothing changes. Right, but the same way we can multiply by four over four, which is still the same as one because of that fraction, that's what we're going to use here. So we're going to say 10 to the ninth nanoseconds is one second. And we're going to square this whole factor. Right, then we get 10 to the 18th square nanoseconds is one second squared. And since we have a square nanoseconds here and a square nanoseconds here, this cancels out. And get, that gives us the units of centimeter squared per second squared. And I think you're, you're seeing where we're going with this. Then we're going to multiply by another factor, which is going to be uh, 100 centimeters and one meter. And we're going to square this as well. And we get meter squared per centimeter squared. The centimeter squared cancels out like this, and we're left with 5 times 10 to the negative 18 times 10 to the ninth squared divided by 100 squared. So 5 times 10 to the negative 18, 5 times 10 to the negative 18, multiplied by 10 to the 9 squared is going to be just 5. And then we're going to divide that by 100 squared. So it's going to be divided by 10 to the 10 squared and then divided by another 10 squared. So it's going to be 10 to the negative 4. 10 to the negative 4. So it's going to, we're, our answer is going to be 10 to the negative, 5 times 10 to the negative 4 grays. And that is answer choice D. And we're done.
All right, so this topic was mostly just being able to convert between units. When they give you the conversions and it's simple like that, you can do that. If they give it to you this way, where there's multiple units and some of them are squared, you can use this technique known as factor label, where we simply multiply by one each time, except that the one is going to be a something between two units, such as 1,000 millimeters in one meter, something like that. And we use that to get the desired units. That's all there is to this topic, and I'll see you next time.